Father, we're grateful for Your presence. We're grateful for Your house. We're grateful for You, Holy Spirit. And we welcome You tonight. And we ask You to teach us truth tonight. Reveal the heart of the Father to us tonight. We thank You for insight. We thank You for utterance. We're just so thankful. Father, we're thankful for the the air conditioner. We're thankful for the seats. We're thankful for the the technology. We're thankful for the cameras. We're thankful for the, the partners and the members. Father, we're thankful for every gift represented in this body of believers. Father, we are thankful that Your grace is sufficient to each and every one of us to do our part. We are thankful for the leadership here. Father, we are thankful for Pastor Justin and Annette, Pastor Rick and Cassie, Dr. Uh, Savelle and Miss Carolyn. We are so thankful for the oversight, the leadership. Father, we're thankful for the greeters, the ushers, our children's ministry. We are so thankful, Father. For every partner, we are thankful. We are such a thankful people. Father, we are thankful that we have health to be here, that we had gas to be here in our vehicles tonight. We are thankful for the food that we've eaten or going to eat. We are thankful, Father, for the air that we breathe. We are thankful that our eyes see and our ears hear. Father, we are thankful that our feet work and our hands work. We are thankful that our heart works. Father, we are thankful tonight. We're thankful. That we have the word of the living God. (laughs) We are thankful. That with your help, we come up tonight. That with your help, we, we think on new levels tonight. With your help, Holy Spirit, we hear on new levels tonight. With your help, we understand in new ways tonight. With your help, there's answers tonight. Answers for businesses. Answers for families. Answers for destiny and purpose. There's direction tonight because you're here. And we just surrender ourselves to you. We declare the spirit of wisdom and revelation and counsel and might and knowledge and the fear of God makes us of quick understanding tonight. As soon as the word goes forth, light comes and we lay hold of understanding tonight. In all of our getting, we get understanding tonight. We thank you for it. We believe we receive answers in advance. We believe we receive overcoming solutions in advance. Hmm. The faithful flourish, that's us. And we just thank you and praise you that we're prospering and increasing and coming up and making steady progress. That we're successful and we're diligent. We give you glory and honor. We're expanding. We're increasing. We thank you, Father. The spirit of increase is upon this house. The spirit of increase is upon our lives. The anointing of increase is upon us. Father, we thank you and we declare restore. Restore financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Restore. Now someone's listening and somebody's here. You come in with pain in one of your elbows, and I declare restoring. The anointing of God is restoring that elbow right now in the name of Jesus. You've been having pain in your right ear. Whoever that is, I want you just to lift your hand up to your right ear. Whoever that is, just lift your hand up to your right ear. Who is that? Okay. Right ear, right now. Father, in the name of Jesus... I command pain to dissipate in the name of Jesus, that we have strong hearing, clear hearing in Jesus' name. You're watching online. You just lift your hand up to your ear right now and receive by faith a healing anointing. There's been pain going up the left side of your neck. Right now I command it to dissipate in the name of Jesus. You don't belong here. I resist you in Jesus' name and you leave. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Behind that right eye, there's been pain, comes and goes. Pain. You leave now in Jesus' name. You come, but you go now and you stay gone in the name of Jesus. Hmm, There it is. Thank you, Father. We declare this is a healed house, a healed family. Wholeness is what we live in. Wholeness. How is that elbow? Ha ha. 
Thank you, Father. Glory to you, Jesus. Before you're seated, if you would turn around and tell somebody you're glad that they're here. And we are glad that you're here. We're glad that you're tuning in tonight. Thank you, Father. We bless you and honor you. We give you glory and honor tonight. Faith in Him. Well, we are in faith school tonight, amen? Thank you for being present. We appreciate your faith. We appreciate your expectation. Are you expecting to hear from the the heart of our Father tonight? Expecting to grow, expecting to come up. Our expectation will not be cut off, amen? Our expectation comes from Him, from Him. From His presence, from His Word, from His Spirit, from Him. From Him. Go with me to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And you know we, Pastor, laid a foundation last week. And we're going to be talking about faith. And you should expect to hear faith coming from uh, and being a part of heritage of faith, right? 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Say, that's me. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. In the Amplified it says, even our faith. This is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. Whatever is born of God, say, that's me. Whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. This is the victory that conquers the world. This is the victory... This is the victory, even our faith. What is the victory that overcomes the world? Our faith. Our faith. Where does faith come from? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Now remember, we're in faith school, right? Where does faith come from? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We know that, right? Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and verses 9. So, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At some point in time in our life, more than likely you're here on Wednesday night, you've heard the Word concerning salvation, correct? You heard that Jesus is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. You heard that the only way for us to come back to the Father is through Jesus, right? You heard the word concerning salvation, and whenever you heard the word, what happened? Faith came for us to receive salvation, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and verses 9. Verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through... Through what? Through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So, for by grace... You have been saved through faith. So by grace, whenever you heard the Word of God in the area of salvation, by grace, grace, see this with me, there was an extension of God's hand by grace that did not come from me. It did not come from you. Grace came from who? God. Grace came from God. There was an extension of the ability of God to you and I. Then there was the faith present for us to receive eternal life, correct? It was a gift of God, so faith did not come from us, it came from? Grace did not come from us, it came from? It was a gift from? So God extended His ability and gave us the ability to receive His nature through the Word of God Whenever we receive the Word of God concerning salvation, we came from the kingdom of darkness, we came into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and what happened? We were dealt the measure of faith. So He, he reached, 
He reached His hand, His grace, His extension to you and I because He loves us so much, correct? And with that extension, in that extension was grace, and in that extension was faith. And we heard the word that we need a personal relationship with Jesus. We receive by faith the word concerning salvation, and now we come into the family of God, and Romans 12, 3 says that we have been dealt the measure of faith, correct? Go with just to the left, Romans 12, 3. I want you to look at that. We're in faith school, so we're going to look over faith scriptures, right? Romans chapter 12, verse 3, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we're in the family of God. Say, I'm in the family of God. Verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we come into the family of God and we are dealt the measure of faith. Now we know the word measure comes from the Greek word matron and it means a predetermined extent or a portion of like if we were to go to your house or you were to come to our house and Heather made a pie and she had a predetermined measure that she was going to give to everybody, that's what God does to you and I. He's no respecter of person, correct? So we come out of the kingdom of darkness, we come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ and there is a measure of faith that each and every one of us um, received. We all start out at the same playing field, correct? Then it's up to us what we do with that measure, whether our measure stays small or our measure increases is up to us, not, right. not God, correct? Right. It says we're dealt the measure of faith. What does this faith look like? Go with me to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Amen. So I ha say, I have faith. If you're in the family of God, you have the measure of faith. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. It says, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. One translation says, Have the faith of God, or have the God kind of faith. So when we come into the family of God and we're given a measure of faith or a portion of faith, it is a portion of the God kind of faith, the faith of God. And with this faith that you and I are given, he says, have faith in God. With the faith of God, we have faith in God. No matter what we're facing, the answer is always have faith in God. When we're dealing with something in our family, the answer is to have faith in in God. When we're dealing with something financially, the answer is always to have faith in God. When we're dealing with something physically, the answer is always to have faith in God. Whenever we're believing God to do the impossible, the answer is always to have faith in God. Faith in God. Now, it's good to have faith in family, but he doesn't say have faith in family. He says have faith in God. It's good to have faith in your friends, but he doesn't say have faith in your friends. He says have faith in God. He says, have faith in God because God is the only one who does not fail, cannot fail, will never fail. Right. It's important to have faith in yourself or confidence in yourself, but he says, have faith in God. You might have faith in your boss, but he says, have faith. He might, it, it, you might have faith in the stock market, but he says, have faith if we were to tie a rope from your faith, where would it end up? Would it be in God or would it be in family? Would it be in God or in job? In, in God or in finances? In God or in your gift? In God or in your friends? In God, faith in God. Faith in God. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Say, I have faith in God. Faith in God. In God. Faith in God. Faith in God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. He says, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. I know whom, not what, but whom 
I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed. Not I know what I have believed, but I know whom I have believed. When I have faith in God, I'm knowing him as God, as healer, as provider, as deliverer, as guider, as front, as rear, as top, as bottom. In God, I am not ashamed for I know who, who I believe. And when I know who I believe in... There's confidence. I can't have confidence in somebody I don't know, but when I have confidence in my bride, I have confidence because I know her. I have confidence in God because we know Him. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Where is our faith? Is it in God? No matter where we're at or how gifted or whatever it is, have faith in in God. Tonight, we're believing God to stir our faith in God. Our faith in God. And if our faith has gotten off a little bit and connected to something else, well, let's just get it right back on target tonight, right? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He says, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Say, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Go with me to the left, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. So if we've come into the family of God and we've been given the measure of faith and we have faith in God, God gave us the faith to have faith in Him. What do we do with this faith? Now we know Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 says, The just shall live by faith, right? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 says, The just shall Live by faith. We're going to see again here in Romans chapter 1. Let's just start in verse 16. And he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And the Amplified translation, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is God's power. I'm not ashamed of the Word of God, for it is God's power. See, in order for the Word of God to be real and the power to be real... Now remember, before you came into the family of God and you were in the kingdom of darkness, you weren't ashamed to think the way you thought. You weren't ashamed to cuss like you cussed. You wasn't ashamed to drink like you drank. You wasn't ashamed to snort or shoot or whatever. You wasn't ashamed to act the way you acted. But now in the family of God, in order for this power to be activated in our life, and the word power means the ability to get results. So in order, I've come out of the kingdom of darkness. I come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I've re received the God kind of faith. And he says, now keep your faith connected in God. And don't you be ashamed of the gospel, of the good news. It's good news that you don't have to think like an addict anymore, but you can think like a redeemed, delivered person. It is good news that you don't have to think sick anymore, but you can think healed. It is good news that you don't have to think broke, but you can think blessed. It is good news that you don't have to think negative, but you can think positive. It is good news. He says, now don't be ashamed of the Word of God, for it is the good news. And it is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. The word salvation comes from the Greek word soteria, which means soundness. The word of God is the power of God unto soundness. The word of God is the power of God unto healing. The word of God is the power of God unto prosperity. The word of God is the power of God unto wisdom. The word of God is the power of God unto deliverance. The word of God is the power of God. The word of God is the power of God to who? To those who believe. Amen. The word of God is the power of God to those who believe. How do we believe right here? It says, uh, for those who believe with a personal trust 
a confident surrender. In other words, a personal trust that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to personally choose to trust God more than I trust myself. I'm going to personally choose to trust God more than I trust my boss. I'm going to personally choose to trust God more than I trust the economy. I'm going to personally choose to trust God more than I trust the government. I'm going to personally choose to trust God. Remember, the Word of God is the power of God to those who... To those who believe, well, how do we believe with personal trust? Do you personally trust that God is healer? Do you personally trust that God is provider? Do you personally trust that God is the one who opens doors? Do you personally trust that God is the one who removes um, sickness and cancer and tumors and tuberculosis? And do you personally trust? It says, how do we believe not only with a personal trust, but with a confident surrender? That the Word of God is the power of God to those who believe with a personal trust, to those who believe with a confident surrender, to those who believe with a firm reliance. The Word of God is the power of God to those who believe. Now, how are we doing tonight? How are we doing with our our personal trust? How are we doing with our confident surrender? How are we doing with our firm reliance? The Word of God is the power of God to those who believe. Do you believe? Do you believe with the personal trust? Do you believe with the confident surrender? Do you believe with the firm reliance? The Word of God is the power of God. It is the ability to get results to all of those who believe if we were to ask most people across the country what is faith most people would say belief right and that's partly true because faith is believing but if and you've heard this example but it it bears repeating here if i come in from the desert and i i sit down right here and they sit the glass of water right here. And I hadn't had water in several days. And I, I just sit there and I just look at this water. And I just keep declaring, I believe that if I drink this water, I will not die. I believe that if I drink this water, I will not die. I believe, I mean, I can yell it at the top of my lungs. I believe that if I drink this water, I will not die. Kapunk. And I die. Now, is what I believe true? Then how come I ended up dying? I didn't act on what I believed. So in order, true, true faith is not only believing, but it's also acting on what I believe. Kind of like a coin. In, in, in our, our society, a coin has to have a head and it has to have a tail, right? In order for there to be an exchange... Um, in our, our, our currency, right, in our economy, it has to have a heads and it has to have a tails, right? But if it had two heads, it wouldn't work, right? If it had two tails, it wouldn't work, right? It has to have a t- heads and it has to have a tails in order for there to be an exchange. Well, in the kingdom of God, let's say belief is the heads and action is the tails. I have to have belief and I have to have action in order for there to be an exchange in the kingdom of God. So I come out of the kingdom of God, I'm dealt the measure of faith, and I I, I have the faith of God, a portion of God's faith, and I have faith in God. Now it says, I'm not ashamed. Now don't don't be ashamed of the Word of God, because the Word of God, it's good news that we're no longer um, bound by sin. It's good news that sin no longer has dominion over us. It's good news that we're redeemed from the curse of the law. It's good news that God's mercy is new every day. It's, it's good news that whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. It, it's good news to those who believe. But when I truly believe something, there's going to be actions corresponding with what I believe. So let, let's just touch on three things really quick here. Faith in itself. We have faith in God, right? But faith is precious. You can write these down. Faith is precious. Faith is powerful. And faith pleases God. Faith is precious. Faith is powerful. And faith pleases God. Faith is precious. 
I come into the family of God. I'm given the measure of faith. I have faith in God. Faith is how I live. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith, we're not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So when we stay in the word of God, faith is coming, right? And it's taken us from faith to faith. First, first Peter, go to the right of where we're at. First Peter chapter 1. So I have faith in Him, and my faith is precious. My faith is precious. I remember years ago I was doing a, a military service. I can still see this West Texas town. I mean, it, it was like a, uh, just a movie. I mean, do, 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 do. you know, no grass, just dirt out there. And I'm, I'm sitting there talking to this military chaplain. And we're talking about faith and talking about faithfulness and the things of God. And he'd been at this for years and years. And he says, you know, I don't trust anybody that their faith hasn't been tested. In other words, he was saying a faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. In other words, when all hell has broke loose, you kept your faith in God. Whenever you got the doctor's report, you kept your faith in God. Whenever finances didn't line up the way you wanted them to, you kept your faith in God. Whenever people exited stage left in your life, you kept your faith in God. No matter what you faced, you kept your faith in God. A faith that has been tested is a faith that can be trusted. Because you realize your faith isn't in you, your faith is in in God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7, he says that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to read it again. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Your faith is precious. How precious is your faith to you? Go with me to Luke chapter 15. Say, my faith is precious. Luke chapter 15. So faith is precious, faith is powerful, and faith pleases God. Luke chapter 15. Verse 8. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin... I know you don't have this in my notes up there, but I want to start in verse 1. Luke 15, verse 1, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him, and the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Why would he go after that lost sheep? Because it's precious. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. Why would he rejoice? Because it's precious, right? And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Why would he be rejoicing? Why would he be calling his friends and neighbors? Why? Because it's precious to him, right? Verse 7, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the ninety-nine just person who need no repentance. Verse 8, what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? Why would she light a lamp? Because that coin is precious to her, right? That, that equals, you know, a, a, each coin equals a day's wage. And so this is 10 days wages to her. So she's going to light the lamp and she's going to clean. She's going to sweep. Why? Because that coin is precious to her. And verse 9, and when, when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together. Why does she call her friends and neighbors, neighbors together? Because it's precious to her, right? This is an interactive message, just so you know. <laughs> 
um, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents... Notice he is comparing the sheep, he's comparing the coin. He goes on, and you can continue reading your own time, the two sons. Why does he rejoice at these things? Because those things are precious, precious to him. Our faith is precious. Peter said our, our, our faith is precious. It's more precious than gold. How precious is your faith to you? Because your faith is what brought you out of the kingdom of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You know, it takes faith to come near to God and to discover His plan for your life. It takes faith to, once you discover the plan, to put the plan into motion. It takes place to change the way you think. It takes faith to change the way you speak. It takes faith to receive deliverance. It takes faith to receive healing. It takes faith. How precious is your faith? When your faith puts food on the table, it becomes precious. When your faith has delivered you over and over again, your faith becomes precious. When your faith helps you overcome every devil in hell, your faith becomes precious. When your faith rescues you from the jaws of death, your faith becomes precious. Faith is precious. This is when the shame becomes, it, it begins to rip off your life. I'm not talking about being a fruit loop. I'm talking about being focused. That might be another sermon. Are you a fruit loop or are you focused? <laughs> How precious is your faith? Luke 18. Go to the right of where we're at. Say, my faith is precious. My faith is powerful. My faith pleases God. My faith is in God. Now Luke chapter 18. Now you know this is the parable of the persistent widow. Let's just start verse 7. And shall God not avenge His own elect who cry out day and night to Him, though He bears long with them? I tell you, this is verse 8, that He will avenge them speedily, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He really find faith on the earth? Will He really find faith on the earth? In the Amplified it says, will He find persistent faith on the earth? Will He find, really, will He find faith on the earth? Whenever, whenever Jesus returns, will He find faith in your house? Will he find faith? How precious is our faith? Because yeah, we come out of the kingdom of darkness and we've received the measure of faith and our, our faith is in God and we have a portion of the faith of God. But is our faith precious enough that we continue to develop in our faith? Because he says when you come into the kingdom of God, now, now live by faith. This is the prescription for life is to live by faith. Amen. To live by faith. How precious is your faith? It says when Jesus comes, see, just like that woman that was searching for the coin, the Bible says when Jesus returns, He's going to be searching for faith. Just like that, that person was searching for that lost sheep, when Jesus returns, He's going to be searching for faith. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9, it says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro over the whole earth, looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf. He's looking for faith. How precious is your faith? Because your faith is precious, but your faith is also powerful. Go to Luke 17, just to the left of where we're at. Say, my faith is precious. My faith is precious. Say, my faith is, my faith is powerful. And my faith pleases God. Now I realize, say this, I realize my faith comes from God and my faith is in God. Luke 17, verse 5. Now you know this is, they're, they're talking about faith here and verse 3 and 4, you can be talking about forgiveness. He says, forgive seven times 70. Verse 5, and the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if... You have faith. They asked, this would, this would sound like us, right? Increase our faith. In other words, we think we have faith. 
you go to most people that are born again, children of God, most churches... And we asked, do you have faith? Oh, yes, that you, you know, I, I have faith. Or would you go pray for you know, Aunt Boo Boo? Because she has lots of faith. Uncle Ding Dong, he has lots of faith. What do you mean they have lots of faith? Well, they go to church all the time. I know a lot of people that go to church all the time. There's not an ounce of faith. So Jesus right here says, well, if... If you had some, <laughs> I know you think you have a lot, but if, if you have some, if you have some, if, if you have some, now we've already discovered in the Word of God that we have some. Say, I have some. When we come into the kingdom of God, we've already learned through the Word of God, we've been dealt the measure of faith. And Jesus said right here, if you have some, say, I have some. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. So not only is our faith precious, he says if you have faith as a mustard seed, if you have just a little bit of faith, if you have just a quarter, I mean, notice what he's saying here. If faith is precious to you, you will say to this mulberry tree, notice how faith is also powerful right here be pulled up by the roots, picture this, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. So not only is faith precious, you come into the kingdom of God, you've received the measure of faith and Jesus said if you have faith, you're going to be saying faith um, believes and faith speaks, right? He says you're going to be saying and this is what's going to happen. It's going to, you saying, you, you, the faith that you have right now, there's enough power in it for you to pull up that tree by the roots and you to relocate that tree and put it in the ocean. Faith is not only precious, faith is also powerful, but he's wanting us to tap into it. Amen. He's wanting us to tap into it. He's saying if we had faith, just a little bit of faith, just the faith of a mustard seed, we would walk in power. That you and I, we, we have the power to pull a tree up by a root, and even though the sea might be 20, 30, 40 miles away, that through faith you can relocate it in the ocean. Now, I know that this is, can be boggling to the mind. Well, bless God. No, listen to what he's saying. We have the faith of who? Of God. Where did this faith come from? It was a gift from? And this faith is in you and it's in me. And he says, now it's up to us to develop. Don't you be ashamed of it because it is the power of God unto healing, unto soundness, unto salvation. It is the power of God. The faith of God is precious. How precious is your faith? The same faith that got us saved is the same faith that helps us receive healing. The same faith that brought us out of the, ch the chains of darkness and, and hindrances and obstacles and demonic activity is the same faith that continues to take us from glory to glory, faith to faith. Faith is precious and faith is powerful. He says, and this faith that you have that's so powerful, it's an indicate, there's an indicator and it's by what you say. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Say, faith is precious and faith is powerful. Faith is powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks, right? How did we get saved? We believed in our heart unto righteousness and we declared with our mouth unto salvation. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11, 12, and 13, it says we not only believe that we receive Jesus, but he says continue to believe. So in order for us to not only walk by faith and to live by faith, it's going to be using our heart. We believe with our heart and we declare with our mouth unto salvation. We believe in our heart the Word of God and we declare with our mouth the Word of God unto healing. We believe in our heart the Word of God and we declare with our mouth the Word of God concerning finances. We believe in our heart and we declare with our mouth the Word of God unto deliverance. We believe in our heart and we declare with our mouth. The Spirit of faith believes and the Spirit of faith speaks. Isn't that the way God created the world? He, he believed and He spoke. And He framed the world's with His Word. Amen. 
And you and I are created in His image and in His likeness. And we believe, therefore, we speak. Now go to Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is precious. Faith is powerful. And faith is pleasing. Faith is pleasing. Now faith... Let's just start in verse 1. Now faith is... Say faith is. Faith is. is. So faith is always in the present, right? Say it's in the present. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, I want to read a few definitions of the word substance. Now faith is. So so God is, is, He is the healer. He, He is the I am. He is the deliverer. He is the provider. He is. Not He was or He's going to be. He he is. He is the I am. He he is. So if He is, I is. If He is the healer, I is the healed. If He is the provider, I is the provided for. If He is the deliverer, I is the delivered. He is. Now faith is. Say it is. The Word is. Faith is. God is. It's always now. Faith is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word is the carrier of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the Word is. If faith is, the Word is. So when I read the Word, faith comes. The the Word is, faith is. Now the Word is the substance. Faith is the substance. The Word is the substance. Definition of substance. The Word is the ground. The Word is the base. The Word is the support. The Word is the confidence. The Word is the assurance. So now faith is the ground. Faith is the base. Faith is the support. Faith is the confidence. Faith is the assurance. The Word is the ground. The Word is the base. The Word is the support. The Word is the confidence. The Word is the assurance. The Word of God is the faith of God. The Word of God is the confidence of God. The Word of God is the assurance of God. The Word of God is the substance. It's the confidence, it's the certainty, it's the assurance. The Word of God is, it is, it is. In the Amplified it says, it is the the confirmation and the title deed of things we hope for, being proof of things we do not see. The Word of God is assurance. The Word of God is confidence. The Word of God is confirmation. You, you think of a confirmation number. You know, we travel all over the, the country and, and we're going to go from point A to point B. We don't see the hotel room, but we have a confirmation number that we're very confident in that whenever I walk up to the desk, I'm expecting a room somewhere because I have a confirmation number. I go up to the, to the, the desk at the airport and I'm confident that I have a seat on that airplane Even though I can't see the airplane and I can't see the seat, but I've got a confirmation number saying, that's my seat. So the Word of God is my confirmation number. That there is a seat for me somewhere. There's a room for me somewhere. It's a title deed. If I I have a title deed, it's proof that I have a car somewhere. If I have a title deed, it's proof I have a house somewhere. You don't even need to see the house or see the car, but you know I have it because I have the title deed. Maybe what... Whatever it is, God sent you and I a text message. And 1 Peter 2.24 is our confirmation number that we step up to the counter knowing that healing is mine because I have a confirmation number. That provision is mine because Philippians 4.19 is my confirmation number. 3 John 2 is my confirmation number. Don't tell me I don't have provision somewhere coming to me somehow. That's not mine to figure out. Mine is to keep my faith in Him and to allow my confirmation number to develop my faith and allow assurance and confidence and certainty 
to be in my life because I have a confirmation number. You can't talk me out of my seat on healing train because I got a confirmation number. You can't talk me out of my title deed that, that says I have the provision. The word is the title deed. The word is the confirmation number. So whatever you're facing, this is the word of God unto salvation. It is the power of God. It is the ability to get results when we believe. When we believe how? With a personal trust. When we believe how? With a confident surrender. When we believe how? With a firm reliance that I've got my confirmation, my title deed, and I don't care what anybody else said, it's mine. Faith is the ground. Faith is the support. Faith is the substance. Faith is the assurance. Faith is the certainty. Well, how do I, I take it from here into here to the point of certainty? Come here, Freddie. Come, come here, Vic. So let's just say, I trust you. Right? <laughs> so so stand, stand right over here and stand right over here. Now you catch me, okay? Now let's just say, let's just say, I, I know Mr. Healing. I know God as healer. I know Him as Jehovah Rapha. I know Him as healer because I've spent... Time, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I have the confirmation that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. The title deed that he already sent his word and healed me of every manner of sickness and every manner of disease. I know healing and I trust. I have a, a confident surrender, a personal, a personal trust, a firm reliance that whenever I lean back on Mr. Healing, you, and I trust you in Jesus' name, <laughs> it's going to be there for me. It's going to catch me. But if I just know about Jehovah Jireh, that God provides my need, I might, I might want to, but every time I, I don't really have a, a firm reliance because I don't really know. I'm not real certain. So I'm going to keep trusting in myself. I'm going to keep relying on myself. But over here, boy, I know healing. I'm confident in healing, but God, to supply my need? But when we take our confirmation, our title deed, the Word, not only do we know about Mr. Healing, we know Mr. Healing, God as healer. Not only do we know about God as provider, but now we know God as our provider Makes sense? Would you give the guys a hand clap? Thank you. That really would have messed up my demonstration if you had dropped me with. <laughs> we come out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the family of God and we are dealt the measure of faith and now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we're not ashamed of this Word that we're hearing, just like we weren't ashamed of the way we used to live. We're not ashamed of the Word of God on victory. We're not ashamed. And now this Word that we're not ashamed of, it becomes the power of God. Power being the ability to get results. It becomes the power of God unto healing, unto provision, unto soundness, unto guidance, now we're not just knowing about it, but we are believing. This is the power of God to those who believe. How? How do we believe? With a confident surrender. How do we believe? With a firm reliance. How do we believe? With a personal trust. This faith, it's precious. Say it's precious. It's precious. This faith, it's powerful. Say it's powerful. it's powerful. This faith is pleasing. It's pleasing. It's pleasing. Remember when Jesus comes back, He says, Will I find faith on the earth? It's pleasing. He's looking for this faith that pleases Him. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's just keep reading for a little bit. In Hebrews 11, we're getting ready to be done here. You doing okay? Yes. Our faith is in Him, isn't it? Our faith is precious. Say, our faith is precious. Our faith is powerful. 
Our faith is pleasing. Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, For by it faith the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Verse 4, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it... He being dead still speaks, verse 5, by faith. Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had his testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Faith pleases God. Say it pleases God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is... And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now go with me to Genesis 15. Say, faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. God. Our faith is in him. Say, my faith is in him. My faith is precious to me. I'm glad three of you got that. (laughs) Genesis 15, verse 1. And after these things, the word of the Lord came. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by by the word of God. See, Abraham didn't have Hebrews chapter 11 like you and I did, do, right? And it says, and after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. So faith came. And he says, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Faith came, I am your shield, and I am your exceedingly great reward. Faith came, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God, but those who come to God must believe that He is, and He is the rewarder, He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He is the rewarder of them that diligently go after Him. He is the rewarder of them that diligently draw near to Him. He is the rewarder for them that that, that knock. He is the rewarder of them that ask. He is the rewarder of them that not only believe, but they do. He is the rewarder. Say, He's the rewarder. So He spoke this word to Abraham that he He is His exceedingly great reward. Right? So He spoke and what happened? Faith came. Now he goes on, but Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? In other words, he's saying, Lord, you know that's great and everything, but I don't got a child. (laughs) And the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born of my house is my heir. Let me read that again. Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Verse 4, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. How does faith come? By hearing, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. So notice how faith came by what? Hearing the word of God. How does faith come for you and I? By hearing the word of God. What pleases God? Faith pleases God, right? It says right here that whenever he heard the word, then he chose to believe the word. The spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks, correct? When he chose to believe what God said, it accounted him uh, unto him for righteousness. It pleased God to make him righteous because he not only heard the word, but he believed the word and he acted on the word and it pleased God. To him, his faith was precious, so precious that it affected you and I. So precious that it's affected the church. So precious that it allowed God to come through that lineage and and produce Jesus on the earth to bring you and I back in relationship with God. His faith was so precious. Your faith is so precious that it's going to affect generations. Your faith to believe God is so precious not only going to bring deliverance to you, it's going to bring deliverance to others. It's not only going to bring provision for you, it's going to bring provision for others. It's not only going to spare your life, it's going to spare the life of others. 
We have the faith of God and it is precious. Say it is precious. But this precious faith is not just precious, but it is powerful. It is the same faith that created the heavens and the earth. It is the same faith that raised Jesus from the dead. It is the same faith that parted the Red Sea. It is the same faith that opened blind eyes and deaf ears. It is the same faith. This faith is powerful that it translated Enoch. He was and then he was not. And this faith pleases God. This faith that is in Him. In Him. Not in us, not in our job, not in our family, not in our friends, in, in Him. In Him. How, how, how do I, I develop that certainty, that confidence in Him? See, I've spent years sitting on chairs that I don't even think about it now. I'm just confident that in the way they're made, so I can sit, I can rest Because of the confidence that we have in chairs. It's the same way that we spend time in God's Word. Hearing, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And remember, it's the certainty. It's the confidence. It's the assurance. It's the base. It's our confirmation. It's our title deed. Just like that chair, we have that confidence surrender. We sit on it. We stand on it. We don't even think about it. It's just our natural reaction. It used to be natural to cuss, but now it's natural to say, Thank you, Lord! It used to be natural to think on lack, but now it's natural to think on the blessing. It used to be natural to think on sickness, but now it's natural to think on healing. It used to be natural to hoard money. Now it's natural to tithe and honor and bless. It's natural to worship. It's natural to overcome. It's natural to believe. It's natural to live in victory. It's natural to get up and shout glory to God. It's natural. Because this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Did you get something out of the Word tonight? Can we give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. Father, we just love you so much. And we thank you for the Word of God that does not return void. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you continue to to reveal the heart of the Father concerning the faith that you've placed on the inside of us, that our faith is in you. When we get up in the morning, our faith is in you. When we lay our head down tonight, our faith is in you. When we think about our kids, our faith is in you. When we think about the abundance coming to us, our faith is in you. When we think about our divine health, our faith is in you. When we think about flourishing and thriving, our faith is in you. Father, our faith is precious to us. Our faith is powerful. It is powerful in our life. Father, right now, we put a demand upon resources. Right now, we put a demand upon increase. Right now, we put a demand upon the healing power of Almighty God. Right now. Ah, Father, our faith is pleasing to You, and that is our heart. We want to please You. We want to please you in our family. We want to please you in our businesses. We want to please you in our church. We want to please you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.